Sunday school lesson is the birth of Moses. And here we are in the second book of the Bible, the book of Exodus. Uh, we're in chapter two. And I'll be reading in the uh, King James Version, verse, verses one through 10. The lesson says, and there went a man of the house of Levi, glory to God, and he took to wife of the daughters of Levi. Well, there's quite a story just in that alone. Uh, Levi, when it says of the house of Levi, it means of the tribe of Levi. Well, uh, the nation of uh, Israel, the Israelites, are comprised of 12 tribes. And the descendants of uh, in each of those tribes are what make up this beautiful and great nation. Well, of the 12 tribes, they're named after the sons. There's a little exception there. We'll talk about that another time. But basically, the 12 uh, tribes are named after the 12 sons of Jacob. Jacob uh, has, and his twin brother Esau are the sons of Isaac. And Isaac, of course, is the son of Abraham. So Abraham has Isaac. Isaac has Esau and Jacob. Jacob, his name gets changed to Israel. And so Israel's descendants are the Israelites. And Israel has 12 sons. And so all of the children of those 12 sons, those children are called tribes. That's where we get the term, the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen? Um, and so uh, of those sons, the oldest son is Reuben. The second son is Simeon. The third son is Levi. Well, Levi, um, his descendants later on came to be known as the Levites because they're descendants of Levi. Well, there's an incredible importance of the tribe of Levi because in the tribe of Levi, there will be a man born by the name of Aaron, who was brother to Moses. Aaron's descendants will be the priests. Amen. The other Levites, they will serve in other incredible capacities uh, uh, in the house of God, but only the descendants of Aaron, only those sons are priests. Others serve in other positions. Amen. Uh, the Levites included what we would call deacons and what we would call ushers and the choir, <laughs> the maintenance staff of the house of God, tribe of Levi. And so this is very significant because this becomes known as the priestly tribe. Amen. And we find here that this particular man, he's of the tribe of Levi. And uh, he's not a priest because the priesthood was not established until uh, the time when Moses is the leader and his brother Aaron is working with him. And God tells Moses, anoint your brother Aaron to begin the priesthood. That's why Aaron is the first uh, in the office of the priest in Israel. Oh, glory to God. And then there were different kinds of priests and so on, the high priests and so on. So all of that's the, the beautiful story of what the Lord will do with this wonderful tribe. Well, at the time of this lesson, we're just looking at Moses being born. So he's not the leader of the nation yet. So he hasn't anointed his brother yet. So we don't have any priests yet, but we will. Glory to God. But this is the tribe. This man who is of the tribe of Levi, he marries a woman who is of the tribe of Levi as well. We'll later learn that this man, his name is Amram, and his wife is Jochebed, and they are going to have three children. They're going to have a daughter whose name is Miriam. They'll have a son named Aaron, and they'll have a son named Moses. <laughs> Glory to God. What a wonderful stories we find in God's sweet word. Well, uh, here Amram and Jochebed get together. Verse uh, 2, and the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw him, he was a goodly child, and she hid him three months. Well, the context of this, we're in Exodus chapter 2. The context of this is the reason she's hiding this son, which is Moses, is because an edict has gone out from Pharaoh. Because Amram and Jochebed are amongst the uh, Jews that are down in Egypt, and they're in slavery. Glory to God. And we know that the total uh, time that they would be, there would be four centuries, 400 years, hallelujah. And uh, during this particular time, uh, the uh, uh, Israelites are slaves in Egypt. And of course, we know the reason that they're slaves in Egypt is because Pharaoh, who is the leader of Egypt, 
feared them because they were multiplying. They were growing incredibly. God told Abraham, I'm going to multiply your seed like the stars of heaven, sands of the sea. So they're multiplying incredibly. And uh, the Egyptians wonder, wait a minute now, they're growing so much in number. What if a war should arise and they should side with another nation? They could overthrow us. We could be in great danger. So to suppress them, to bind them, will make them slaves. Well, that Pharaoh who had that attitude toward these basically foreigners in his land knew not Joseph who um, in the prior years, we know his brothers were jealous of him. He was sold uh, into slavery in Egypt. He was a slave in Egypt. He was in Potiphar's house. We know the great story. Oh, you don't want to miss that in Genesis, the story of Joseph, amen. He is the 11th of Jacob's uh, 12 sons. He's number 11. Number 12 is his younger brother, Benjamin. And of course, uh, Joseph, uh, by a whole series of stories uh, and events, he ends up being sold. He was hated by his brothers. Uh, he was sold as a slave into Egypt. Well, he's a slave in Egypt and he's in Potiphar's house. And then Potiphar uh, 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 promotes him because he's a tremendous laborer and worker. And God is with him. God had told Abraham, I'm going to bless your seed. God blessed Joseph. And Joseph was faithful to the God of heaven. We never see where he worshiped another God. Amen. And uh, so he's down in Egypt and uh, uh, he's promoted and blessed. But then uh, uh, Potiphar's wife lusts after him. He will not compromise uh, and uh, commit adultery. And so she lies on him and says he raped her, tried to rape her. And so he's put into prison. So he's falsely accused. Now he's in prison. But while he's in prison, the hand of God is on him and God promotes him into prison. <laughs> and the gifts keep working in him. Lord God, this is a glorious story. Time won't allow to give the whole story, but he has the gift of interpreting dreams and so on. And through his giftedness, he ends up being uh, uh, raised and promoted to second in charge of Egypt. And through the wisdom of God in him, preserves Egypt as a nation and brings them great wealth and preserves their lives. And people have to buy food from uh uh, from Egypt because there's an incredible famine, uh, seven years worth of it. And during the famine, uh, Joseph is promoted and he's reunited with his father and his family. And his family is very special because this is Joseph's family and Joseph is the one who has saved the nation. Well, time passes and arises, uh, comes to power a Pharaoh that knows not Joseph. So he doesn't regard him. We need to remember that. Whatever we do, God will remember. But a lot of times we'll do things incredible and people will forget. Forget what we did. Generation arises, doesn't know. Sometimes a generation that we were serving directly will forget. But oftentimes generations later will forget. But when we serve the Lord, we can be assured. Praise God, the Lord remembers. Amen? But this new Pharaoh arises, doesn't remember Joseph, so he doesn't regard Joseph's uh, descendants. And you wonder, why didn't somebody go get the archives and tell him, wait, 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 these are Joseph's people. <laughs> Glory to God. But prophecy had to come to pass. And so now they're in slavery. And while they're in slavery and multiplying, the Pharaoh puts out another decree. Not only are they going to be slaves, but we're going to kill the baby boys. Wow. When the babies are born, if it's a boy, we're going to kill him because, of course, the boys are going to become men and they're going to be able to be warriors and protect and provide and, and uh, uh, love their families and lead their families. And we got to get rid of them. Kill the baby boys. What a decree. The devil's a destroyer. And so uh, puts out the decree, but a lot of the Egyptian midwives are like, no, 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 we're not killing these, these Jewish babies. We're not going to do it. Hallelujah, because they just had a, 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 maybe the fear of the Lord came upon it, but they're like, like, we're not going to do it. And so Israel continues to multiply. But if you have a baby boy, you better hide it. And that's where today's lesson opens. She has a baby. Turns out it's a son. Oh, they're going to kill him if they find him. So she hides him. And now three months have passed. Oh, glory to God. Don't forget to read Genesis and see all the other precious details in the story. Well, here we come. He's been hit three months. Look at verse three. And when she could no longer hide him. Oh, oh, there's a message in that. Glory to God. She couldn't hide him anymore. She took for him an ark of bulrushes and dubbed it with slime and with pitch. Hallelujah. And put the child in it and laid it in the flags by the river bank. And his sister stood up far off to wit to see what's going to be done to him. So he's now three months of age. So the mother takes uh, basically this vegetation and weaves for him an ark. 
Anybody remember the story of an ark? Well, back in Genesis chapter 6, another uh, person made an ark. Noah made an ark to the saving of his family. And now, this time, Jochebed, the mother, makes an ark to the saving of her son. Glory to God. And of course, for us, Jesus. Hallelujah. These are just symbolic. Jesus is the ark that keeps us safe. Glory to God. And so, uh, and keeps us safe and preserves us from the destruction and death that's all around. Oh, how many know Jesus is your ark today? Glory to God. And so she puts him into the ark and puts him into the river. Well, his sister Miriam is watching to see what's going to happen. Down the river he goes, some say it was a river Nile, but it was a river that was near that would lead to where the palace was because the Pharaoh's daughter did her uh, bathing and refreshing herself there uh, in the river. Well, the ark that has Moses in it is going down the river and it's approaching unto the palace. Glory to God. And look at verse five. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along the river's side and uh, uh, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to go get it. God causes Pharaoh's daughter to see the ark. Oh, glory to God. It's amazing. You never know what methodology God's going to use for your blessing. Oftentimes, God makes your enemies your footstool. He'll use the one her father put the decree that this baby was to be killed. God's going to turn around and use somebody in his own house to spare his life out of the same house which came the order to destroy him. God can turn things in a most amazing way. Sometimes your blessing comes from an unexpected source, a most unexpected source. So they, they go fetch it, and when she opened it, she saw the child, and the baby wept. And God used the weeping baby, and she had compassion and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. She knew. It's a Hebrew baby. Not just baby. It's a Hebrew baby. And what happened? Then said his sister, Miriam's watching, says to her, here's a baby. He's weeping. Her heart's been touched. The sister which many believe to be Miriam, to our knowledge, according to the scripture, we don't know of any other sister. So Miriam uh, um, saying, would you like me to get somebody to nurse the baby for you? So that's the next verse. Um, and, and so uh, verse seven, then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse of the Hebrew woman that she can come and nurse the child for you, right? Uh, what a perfect arrangement. Look at the next verse. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yeah, that's a good idea. That sounds great. Go. And so the maid went and called the child's mother. So Mary goes and gets her mom, Jochebed. Then look what happened. Uh, verse, uh, look at verse 9. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take the child away and nurse it for me, and I will give you wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. So tells the mother, Jochebed, your act of faith, of course, these aren't the words of Pharaoh's daughter, but God used her act of faith. Lord, I've hid him three months. I can't hide him any longer. I'm entrusting that you're going to work a miracle. And so now she gets her child back. She's going to nurse her own child, which is what she wanted to do anyway. And she's going to get paid to do it. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Well, for the wicked, the scripture, uh, there's wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous. Amen. Uh, and then verse 10, and the child grew and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, it's because I drew him out of the water. That name referring to being drawn out. What an incredible beginning to an incredible story. We never know what methodology God is going to use to bring us out. But God did promise to bring us out. And we have to walk with him by faith. Oh, what a story. This is only the beginning. Time for our Bible Spotlight. We are continuing our study uh, of the Great Commission of the Church. We're very excited. We have covered uh, the passage of, Mark, of uh, Matthew chapter 10, uh, verses 7 and 8. And then we have finished uh, looking at Acts 
chapter 1 and verse 8. And now we're on our third of our fourth passages in the book of Mark, chapter 16, beginning with verse 15, verse 15 through 18. Glorious passage, amen? Um, and I'm reading in the King James Version. And he said unto them, Jesus speaking to his disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Wow. <laughs> Verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be condemned or damned. Those words are used interchangeably. Wow. 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. He goes on uh, after those uh, uh, instructions, he goes on to give a descriptor. And these signs are going to follow them that believe. Uh, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, uh, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall, not hurt, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Oh, what a list. And so we want to work our way through these. The first one uh, is, is vital that we be reminded again that every one of these uh, instances where we see the Great Commission, there is the uh, uh, assignment to go preach everywhere. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, two things here. Go. It's not just we wait for the church, the, the world to ask, and thank God they do. Sometimes they inquire of us concerning the hope that's in us. But our job is to go and carry the gospel everywhere. Whatever method the Lord blesses us with, every door that the Lord allows for us, go and take the gospel. Hallelujah. Number two, it's to every creature. A creature is a created thing. Well, we're talking about man who is God's uh, crown jewel of creation. Tell everybody. We're not preaching now to cats and dogs, lions and tigers, and to the uh, the chair in the living room, right? Because the gospel's not for them. Uh, the gospel is for those that are lost. The only ones that are lost are the ones that transgressed God's holy law. The only ones that received God's holy law was man. So since only man had the law, only man could break it. Only man sinned. And so Jesus came for mankind. Amen? He came to die for us and to recover us, the ministry of reconciliation back to God. Go preach the gospel to people everywhere. And when we were covering the passage in Acts 1 and 8, if you missed that portion, you can go back and listen. Where we looked in detail about the different elements and areas where sometimes we don't reach this group, we don't reach that group. But the church in, in its entirety is to reach the whole world. You and I, God has given us a sphere of influence. God has given us certain people we have access to, whether in person, whether by media, whatever uh, particular uh, system is used. All of us have an opportunity to get the gospel to someone. Spoken, sung, testified, written, whatever method, we should be about our Father's business. Amen? Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Look at verse 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But the one that doesn't believe is going to be damned or condemned. Condemned to what? Eternal death. It matters. Salvation matters. Jesus didn't come, suffer, and die for nothing. It matters. All those whose names are not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life, all those who have rejected Christ, they will be lost, precious ones. And we studied various times about hell. I did a personal study. I was, Lord, is it possible that it's temporary? Is it possible? It's forever. Just a few weeks ago, we looked at that uh, passage of scripture there in, uh, I believe it's Mark chapter 9, that says the worm never dies and the fire is not quenched. Over and over and over and over. The fire is not quenched. It's not quenched. It's forever. The lake of fire is forever. And so knowing the scripture says, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Apostle Paul used that phrase in that knowing the reality of judgment. We need to reach people everywhere. Telling everybody everywhere, <laughs> everybody, everywhere, telling them the gospel. Those that believe in the key element. We look here, we see that word over and over again. In verse 16, believe. Again, in verse 16, believe. In verse uh, 15, it's even in 15, believe. In verse uh, 17, believe. All of these uh, repetitions, belief, faith in Christ, that's how we're saved. 
People have all other things they've added in the mix, but we're saved by faith in Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We don't work our way. Our deeds don't save us. Faith in the blood of of what the blood of Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. Our job, great commission, tell everybody everywhere about Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father, we thank you that you're faithful when we can see how and when we can't see how. You remain faithful. Help us to believe and to give you glory and honor therein. For this, we give you praise. Bless my brothers, sisters, and friends. Encourage them. Any of you don't know Christ, receive him now. Take Jesus as your choice. Leave your old life behind. Ask him to forgive you, wash you, make you clean, cause you to be born again. Join a Bible preaching and teaching church and serve the living God. And all of us, until we meet again, let's remember this. The God of the Bible is real. Prepare for your divine appointment with him. It's coming. Mm -hmm.